Hi, in this video we will look into selection of PID controller mainly to answer which controller to use in which, con which condition. Uh, controller as in whether we should use proportional, proportional integral, proportional derivative or proportional integral derivative controller, uh, which kind of structure suits better in what situation. So here typically in the uh, control scenario the requirements comes out to be as how well my set point changes should be responded how the, um, what is the quality of rejection of the load disturbances, how is my controller able to attenuate the measurement noises, how is the nominal control actions because that is going to, uh, any abrupt changes into the control action is going to eat up the energy of the system finally and, and the endurance of the batteries or, or any uh, requirement, uh, any uh, power requirements are going to go will be directly related to the nominal app control actions that we apply. Whether the, the controller is insens insensitive to the process variations because the process is going to undergo various different environmental conditions, various different uh, uh, disturbances would be appearing here at the same time uh, there are going to be model parameter changes due to aging as well. These requirements more or less we had discussed it earlier but at the same time we have also seen that there is a trade off when we are designing the PID controllers. So what is going to be my priority is to be um, thought about very carefully when applying the PID control. For the PID control design we will be requiring process dynamics because this is purely based on the model based in information what is the levels of the actuators um, are there, what are the minimum and maximum limits at which the actuators are working or actuator saturation uh, information needs to be need to be available to us while designing the PID controller or the disturbance characteristics when the low, when the controller is designed based on for specifically for rejecting the load disturbance. So now um, in, in all these scenarios whether it is a trade off or what not are we able to do a justice with the PID controller? Can the controller as simple as PID controller work as so well in order to, uh, to uh, satisfy these control requirements? And fortunately the answer is yes because, uh, because if the PID is applied under suitable conditions one would be able to, uh, to do the controller job very easily and these requirements can be satisfied. What we have to look into is that under what scenario my, uh, what kind of structure of the PID is going to work the best and that is what these slides are about. When do we use P controller? So for example, my transfer function is given by uh, k upon 1 plus s tau 1 and s plus s tau 2 and s tau 3 or, or may, maybe many more poles available here. But at the same time I have a single dominant pole such that my tau 1 is greater than uh, and this particular tau 1 is the dominant correspond, corresponds to the uh, dominant pole. Under such conditions the proportional control works well, tuning is also easy and it does not, it, it of course introduces steady state error because, um, because there is no integral action appearing here. At the same time the control objective is simple regulating type. What is that regulating type that we are talking about? The set point is, is the, the regulation, regulation, there are two kinds of the control, um, control uh, uh, options that we, we want to look at, how is the, based on how the input is changing. If the input is such that this stays as a step input in terms of one has to maintain at a particular constant value, then it is a set point regulation problem. But if the, the input is changing or it is varying with time, then one looks for uh, the control options of tracking type. 
So the difference between the regulation and the tracking is under, understood based upon the how based upon how the input is changing. If the input is remains constant for a particular interval of time, it's a regulation problem. And if this particular regulation problem is to be applied on a system with a dominant pole, the proportional control gives the answer is what this um, slide tries to convey. Looking at the I control, only the integral control, we already know that the integral control helps us in getting no steady state error, but at the same time it is slow responding. So therefore, it is effective for very fast processes or with very high noise levels. Also it is also effective for process dominant with the dead time because even if there is a dead, if, if even if there is a dead time, the integral action is taking care of the averaging period of the time and it takes care of the um, control actions accordingly very efficiently. At the same time, it is also effective when there are higher order system with all time constants of the same magnitude as compared to the proportional control where we were looking at the system with the dominant pole, the I control, pure I control works when there is um, uh, multiple poles at the, uh, multiple poles at a particular, uh, particular uh, value. Looking at PI control, it, this particular PI control uh, is adequate for all processes where the dynamics is essentially first order, which means so certain examples are the level controls in sing, single tank, stirred con tank reactor with perfect mixing, etc. Or those do not have large number of time constants. So you look at the integral control, we had the higher order terms with multiple poles at a particular value, whereas PI control is very effective when the dynamics is almost same as the first order or we do not have very large number of poles or large number of time const constants associated with those corresponding poles. At the same time, if the step response looks like that of the first order system or so, so we, we, we can assess this by with the help of a step response of the system or using the Nyquist plot where, where uh, for the Nyquist curve, these first order kind of behavior turns out to be lying in the first and the fourth quadrants only. So with, with this kind of assessment, we can say, okay, the system is behaving more like a first order system. And so PI control is a good uh, candidate for, uh, for tuning and for uh, getting the control object is satisfied. So the design, uh, if, if, these, if the process has been designed so that its operation does not have tight control. Tight control meaning I, I, I am looking forward for, okay, if PI control is giving me zero steady state, perfectly fine, which is coming from the integral action. Some adequate trans transient response is coming because of the proportional, ag uh, proportional action. But if there is a tight control over getting saying that I want this much disturbance rejection ratio, I want this exact transient response. So, so we have seen that there are trade-offs. So one cannot get the very tight constraints satisfied with the help of the PI controller, even if, but with, with the slight relaxations on these, on these uh, uh, control parameters or control requirements being satisfied, the PI control works even for the processes with higher order terms. Because we know that integral action is helping us in taking care of the zero steady state and the transient response can be modified with the help of the proportional action. When, when do we use PD control now? Proportional and derivative control. It is effective for system with large number of time constants. Now, because compared to the P, compo, P, P control, PD control is giving me more rapid response and less offset and that is where one can look forward for using the PD control, but it is not at all suitable with very fast dynamics 
or if the measurement is noisy. For example, it's a flow measurement, so uh, measurement is typically going to be very noisy. And one has to resort on either derivative filters applied and, and these measurements are noisy with high frequency components associated or the dynamics itself is a fast dynamics. So the derivative control is tending to give you more errors rather than giving, uh, giving a control, um, control problem getting, uh, control, control satisfied, control, op, control performance, giving uh, rather than giving satisfied, uh, satisfactory control objectives. Now looking at the PID control. For example, I have a double integrator that, that cannot be controlled by PI controller is what we, we will try to look at it. And why is this particular, uh, particular statement coming up? Because the process with the uh, double integrator where the transfer function is given by g of s is equal to 1 by s square. This is already introducing the phase lag of 180 degrees. With PI controller, it will also have, it will introduce further fast phase lag, which means the system is going to be unstable. And so in certain such conditions, derivative control is only needed for such processes. Now with PID control, we will have, uh, uh, PID control is more suitable when the, when the dominant dynamics is of the second order. Because now with only PI, we see that there are lag getting associated. So the derivative, derivative association of the derivative control will add to the phase lead and we will be having a good stability margins turning out to be there. At times with the, with the uh, dominant, if at times, uh, when the dominant dynamics is of second order, then PID is the best solution rather. And you may not get any better gains using any complex controllers. So that's the, that's the other reason that the industrial controls are, st are still relying on PID control. Because more or less the PID or any, any such combination of proportional control integral control and the derivative control is able to give you satisfactory control objectives which we listed in the beginning of this video. Coming to the, um, the idea when to use PID control instead of PI control, more or less we have said this. When we have these di dynamics are characterized by time constants that differ in magnitude. Remember PI control was was beneficial when the system dynamics is more or less uh, do dominant by the uh, first order system. But if there are time constant that differ in magnitude, then you may have, you will have to consider the dynamics as a second order or high order dynamics. In that case, the derivative action, action then be used for the speeding of the response. At the same time, when tight control of higher order systems is required. We have seen that higher order system can be approximated as the, um, uh, can be approximated as first order and second order depending upon the operating frequency range and so on and so forth. So these, this particular high order uh, dynamics would limit amount of proportional gain for the good control, all right? But with derivative action, since this derivative action is improving the damping given by it, one can further increase the gain of the system. So this is why we say that PD control or introduction of the derivative control is, is improving the stability of the system because you get more margin to play around with the proportional gain. At the same time, higher, higher proportional gain will speed up the transient response. So both proportional with derivative is more or less is helping us in getting a better transient response, whereas integral control is helping us in, in, in satisfying the steady state, uh, steady state response of the system. At the same time, when the dynamics is dilly dominated, 
dominated. Then PID control gives better, better options as compared to the PI control because the derivative action will give modest performance improvement compared to the PI controller. But at the same time derivative action gives significant improvement because of the lags dominant of the system. If you are having a long time delay then one has to resort to the dead time concept compensator. But very very um, nominally okay lag, lag PID control is still be resorted to instead of making it more compli complicated by adding dead time compensator and so on. If it is a very long time delay system we have said that it is difficult to control because my, uh, my, my uh, uh, because the, the systems um, average resident time is smaller as compared to the lag of the system. One has to resort to complex methods like adding the de dead time compensator, but with addition of this dead time compensator will provide me the bandwidth to play around with the high loop gain. And with the addition with this high loop gain we will have a better load disturbance rejection ratio. But at the same time we can with dead time and a PID control give solutions for the systems with long, long time delays as well. The next category is system with oscillatory modes. So we will these oscillatory modes are uh, possible when you have flexible robot arms or when we, we have the disk drives or we have the optical memories, flexible space structures, combustion systems or we will take up one example of atomic force micro, microscopes or MEMS systems which are adding uh, the flexibility is into the system and each flexibility can be can, can uh, flexible um, for example it is a flexible arm one can look forward for a piecewise combination of rigid arms and each of the piecewise piece is adding one or the other oscillatory mode to the system. So under those conditions the PID is, is, a, is the answer for applying the control. This, this particular slide summarizes when to use what. For example, my process dynamics is integrating process first one. Then it is best to use only proportional control and we should not use UI because we know that integrating process is already adding is already a lag dominant and adding the I control is introducing further lag phase lag into the system and the system will will be rather uh, become an unstable system. If it is a truly first order system then PI is, uh, uh, is the answer and, D is, and the D controller is not at all required. Essentially first order what is the difference between true first order and the essentially first order is that true first order means I have clearly having one dominant pole. Whereas essentially first order means there is a nearby nearby um, uh, pole which is not very far off as compared to the dominant pole. So there is going to be some transient characteristics because of the nearby pole which is coming up but we can still consider this as a dominant pole. In such situation again one can resort to PI but derivative very small gain of the derivative control can also be considered here. Dominantly second order similarly true second order and the dominant if it is a truly second order system PID is going to give you the solution rather this is recommended that use PID because any other complex uh, controller will not give you any better result uh, as compared to the PID. But if it is dominant second order pole. So again this is between the diff as we said true, true, F, true first order and essentially first order the same it is true second order and the dominance second order. So we have a dominant second order pole and a nearby uh, other poles are also there but which are, which are not very uh, much affecting them affecting the response in the, at this uh, uh, at the transient stages. 
So it is okay to use PID, one can give a try with PID first and, and tune it, uh, most likely you will, you will achieve the control objectives that you have set for. Similarly for higher order also PID is okay to start with, but if it is a large time delay system, it is, it is a no no game. No, no PID is not going to give you the solution alone. We discussed this, one has to relate to uh, resort to getting a dead time compensator or some other predictive methodology in order to, um, to uh, compensate for the large time delays. With compensation, one can resort to using PID, but alone PID is not at all going to solve the problem. So this way we can see that um, when the system um, is easier to control with the help of, uh, for example, it's, a, it's, a first, it's, it's, it's dynamics is, is dominant by the first order or second order system, which we, we can approximate it uh, based on my operating range of the frequencies. These observations will help us that, okay, we can use P, PI, PD or PID control. Um, that is all for this video and uh, yeah, thank you.